Hello everyone, welcome back to the workbench. Well, today I'm not on the workbench, I've had to move locations because I'm going to show you something that doesn't fit on my workbench. And that is all of the larger models that I have in the stash. In the previous video where I looked at all the small kits, you'll remember that I kind of had a few too many. Um, I think the final count was 83. So uh, in this video, we're gonna look at all the big kits I've got in the stash. So without any further ado, Let's get into it. So first up, I thought I'd show you this one. This is the B17G Flying Fortress in 172nd scale from Revell. And I have done an unboxing on this one and I had hoped to get this one on the workbench soon, but unfortunately time has just not been in favor of it, unfortunately. It does look to be a really nice looking model, um, but again, it's one of those kits that are just sitting on the shelf and, and sadly not seeing the light of day, which is gonna be a sort of a theme for this um, video, I'm afraid. It, there's a lot of kits here that I've had for years. So speaking of kits I've had for years, let's take a look at this one. This is the Gloucester Javelin in 148 scale from Airfix. And this was the first release of the kit. There was a recent re-release, the exact same uh, paint schemes and things, but this is the one that was first released about five or six years ago, I think it was. I think my wife bought it for me for, for Christmas. And it's been sitting there and I've had a look at it and it looks to be a really nice kit actually. There's some nice details on, on there. It's quite a big plane as well, even a 148 scale. Um, it would be a really interesting kit to do. But again, it's just, it's just been sitting on the shelf um, gathering dust. People always suggest that I do some uh, things outside of my comfort zone. And I've got this. This is a Type 21 submarine. And this is the one with the, sub with the uh, interior, which you can display all for show. Again, this looks to be a very interesting model. I have heard quite good things about it. But again, I think this will be quite a time-consuming kit to do. So this is probably something I'd have to put on the workbench and have like as a slow burn build rather than as something I can just rush it in a weekend. Up next is something that you've probably seen before as this was featured in my flying hours video. This is the Air Avro Lancaster B3, the Dambusters, uh, in 170 scale from FX. This was voted for by the community um, to use up my flying hours, the tokens that you get on the side of the boxes from Airfix. And this is what they picked. It was uh, the choice between this, uh, Blenheim, and a Meteor, I think. And this is the one they wanted, so I sent off my, my tokens, and Airfix sent it out to me. So when I get around to building this, this will be the second uh, Lancaster that's made an appearance on my channel. Sticking with Airfix, and I could have technically included this in the last video, but the box is a little bit too big. It's the Airfix Centenary Gift Set. I'm going to count this as one kit, even though it has got three models inside of it, purely because it's a gift set with those models in. It's all inside one box, so I'm gonna count it as one product, which makes me feel a little bit better, but I mean, obviously I'm just trying to whitewash the fact that I do indeed have a problem. So inside this one, we've got a Typhoon, which I've already built. Uh, one of these, uh, there's a video on my channel. The Spitfire, I, th I have built a number of these, but it's got different um, paint scheme, a different decal scheme on it. And then the Airfix Sop with Camel, which I haven't built, but it would be interesting to do a comparison because I have already built the Academy Sop with Camel and the Revell one. So it would be interesting to do a comparison of those ones as well. We've got some nice interesting box uh, information on the back there, officially licensed, very cool. One of the uh, cheapest kits that I have in the stash, and you're probably thinking, wow, a Westland Lynx in 148 scale from Airfix. How is that a cheap kit? It should be like 40, 40 pounds. Um, and yes, you're right, but fortunately I got this in a recycling center for two pounds. That's it, yep, just two pounds. I said to the guy, how much do you want for it? And he said, just give me two quid, so I did. There you go, didn't even have to haggle. Um, as far as I can tell, it's still complete. There does have a little sort of display base inside there i think it's slightly folded over on a corner or something but it looks to be okay so yeah this will help me expand into slightly bigger scales than i'm used to 
and also into topics I don't normally cover. I don't really do helicopters, so it'd be a good one to do. And because you all know that I love trains, I've got a big boy locomotive, 187 scale, which I think is HO gauge, isn't it? This is a non-working locomotive, so it won't roll around, or it doesn't have a motor or a pick of electrical current, but it is an interesting looking kit. Got some interesting details in there. So I think my wife got that one for me for Christmas as well, because she knows like trains, she knows like building kits. But it's quite a big model, doesn't really fit on my workbench at the moment. So hopefully when I've expanded my workbench a little bit, I'll be able to make a start on that one. Another Airfix kit that I've heard, well I've heard mostly good stuff about it, but a few bad things as well. This is the Curtis Tomahawk Mark II. Oh, it's not as big as the other kits have been. There we go, let's zoom in on that. There it is. Airfix Curtis Tomahawk Mark II. You'll know that I've built a number of these in 172nd scale because I don't know what it is, but I really like the P40. There's something about it that I, I like. Um, so I thought I'd get this one, especially as it had a bit of a bit of a discount on it. Over there, I got three pounds off of it, so that's pretty cool. Um, we've got two different paint schemes. We've got sort of a desert one and a sort of an army co cooperation one. And yeah, this should be a nice addition to the uh, shelf. Another one that I got some discount on is the Douglas Dakota and it has a Willis Jeep inside of it. Again, I'm counting this as one kit, even though it's got two different uh, subjects in there. I've built the Willis kit before. It's, it's a really nice kit. It's really easy to do. Uh, it's got some great detail, but I've never done the Dakota. So that will be an interesting one to do. To the best of my knowledge, this only comes with the one paint scheme, which is for a aircraft used by the Royal Air Force in Burma. But I mean, if you could replicate the diorama on the front there, that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Something from Ravel next, which I think is sort of X monogram, actually. Um, this is the Sky Raider in 148 scale. And they were quite cheap, I think. I think they were like half price when I originally got around to looking at them. So I didn't just buy one, I bought two. Yes, I, I don't really know why I bought two. I think it's because it comes with like three paint schemes. So if it comes with three paint schemes, it makes sense to do it in at least two of them, I suppose. Um, I'm going to have some decals left over, but yeah. It seems to be quite an old kit. It's got reasonable detail from what I've seen on the inside. Um, it's got like folding wings and things like that. But yeah, uh, a bigger plane to add to my stash. So you know that I love a bit of sci-fi and my wife got this for me a couple of years ago, the Battlestar Galactica. I'm not sure what scale it is. Does it say what scale it is? Hmm, that's interesting. I thought it would have a scale on it. It doesn't seem to have one on the box. That's interesting, isn't it? But yeah, there's a bit of dust on there. It's definitely been on the shelf for probably about four or five years, which is a shame. It does look to be quite a nice kit on the inside. I don't think it'd be too hard to do because it's mostly one colour. Maybe I'll get around to that. Maybe that'll be sort of like a weekend build. There are a lot of parts that I can tell. Does that say 69 parts? Oh, it's not that many then, is it? but perhaps it's just the size of them. I don't know. But yeah, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see that one built. Another helicopter to take a look at, and that is a Chinook. This is the Ravel one in 172nd scale. So it's, you know, it's not a massive scale, but it's quite a big kit, I think. At least the box is quite big, so this is why it's in this video. Level four, but we know that that's, well, not really indicative of how hard it will be to build. It has 209 parts, so that'll be why it's a level four. Looking on the back there, yeah, there's there's some nice images on there. That's quite an exciting looking uh, aircraft to build. Maybe I'll do this one after I've done the Apache I've got in the stash. Again, counting this as one kit, it's a Dogfight Doubles from Airfix. The Supermarine Spitfire Mark 5B and Messerschmitt 109E in 148 scale. Never built one of these uh, Airfix Spitfires or 109s in 148 scale, so that would be a new experience for me but as is quite common with uh, airfix dogfight doubles they come with a little display base so i am actually thinking that i will display these with the landing gear raised so they can look like they're on the uh, on the box there flying around normally i do all my models with the wheels down so i can display them on the shelf but it would be nice to have some with the wheels up let me know is that something you'd do as well leave a comment and tell me what i should do so we're coming towards the end of the uh, large kits now and this is the Airfix Hanley Page 0400 in 172nd scale. This was again a gift uh, given to me by my wife I think back 
in 2016 when I first started getting back into modeling again. At the time I fully intended to build it. It doesn't look too complicated, the tooling is quite old so it's not um, a particularly difficult one by, by the looks of it. I mean it says it's a skill 3 on there but the thing that put me off is all that rigging and you know that I'm not a fan of biplanes because of all that rigging um, but hopefully I will have a bit more practice at doing rigging in the future and I'll get around to doing this one. I don't really want to do this without doing the rigging because I don't feel like I'll be doing it justice. But what do you think? Do you think that's fair or should I just build it and not put the rigging in? And then finally, save the biggest for last. Let's see if it fits in frame. Airfix 124th scale. So it's the only 124th scale uh, model that I own. Uh, Supermarine Spitfire Mark 5B. And this is quite an old tooling. I think it's like 1970s or 80s. Um, there, it did come with paints and glue, but I have since used all of those. And you'll see at the top left, if you can, it said that it was originally £60, which nowadays would be more like £100. But I got it for £25, which is an absolute bargain. I think it was end of line uh, clearance. But yeah, inside it's like the Spitfire Mark I tooling with upgraded parts for a Spitfire Mark V. So you actually have to do quite a few alterations in order to make it a Mark V. So that's put me off building it a little bit. Oh, and, and also the fact that it's massive. It's absolutely huge, and my workspace has no, no room for it. But yeah, so that is all of the big kits that I have in my stash. But that does not mean it's the end of the video. Because, as I'm sure you're probably aware, I do have a bit of an addiction. And let's get into a little segment of the video that I would like to call Every Model I Have Bought Since I Said I'd Stop Buying Models. Or... Bonus round. That is it, that is 100% all of the model kits that are in my stash uh, as of whenever this video was made. Uh, it doesn't include kits that I've already started, um, but there aren't that many of those, so I don't think that's worth making a video about. But yeah, so I think it's safe to say that I do have a bit of, uh, bit of an addiction to this hobby. Like I say, I always maintain that building models and buying them are two separate hobbies and you have to feed both of them. Uh, sometimes it's easier just to buy. But yeah, so there's a lot of kits here that will keep me very busy for a considerable amount of time. And as others have pointed out, perhaps I'm just saving up for my retirement. As I'm sure you can imagine, having this many kits in the stash can be quite an expensive affair. And it's thanks to people on Patreon and uh, my YouTube channel memberships that I can afford to feed this addiction. So a massive thank you to all the people on screen. Finally, one last thank you to all of you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.